So what's going on, people? Yours truly, Cotley Bruce Chrissy, officially in the building. Welcome along to the Positive Podcast. And today, we've got guests from the world of entertainment. We've got Tamsin. We've got Terry from Red Heaven Media. What's going on, guys? Good. And we've got Olga Kabieva. <laughs> so, where do we start? I'll tell you, let's start from the beginning. How did you guys get into this? Olga. How would you describe yourself, adult entertainer or an actress? It's probably adult model and performer. I think it's better. Oh, oh, cheers, thank you. So, how did you get into it? Uh, actually, I was divorcing at that moment. It was uh, 2007. And one friend of mine, uh, she suggested me to send uh, some casting pictures to German companies and to start to shoot um, adult stuff. And so I was thinking, why not? If I can earn some money with it, let's just try and I'm still here. Okay, respect. <laughs> still loving it here. Hashtag McDonald's. And you guys, Tamsin? I started doing modeling, probably when I was 18. Just standard modeling. Uh, and then I got offered a lot of money for what I thought was a normal shoot. <laughs> um, <laughs> actually did it. I was like, nothing, nothing, you know, might as well give it a go. Uh, got to the end of it, I was like, that was fun, but probably don't want to do that again. Well, uh, what, what, do you, what do you mean? Like, elaborate. It was just a full, like, open leg toys. I walked into a room thinking that, like, because they were like, we're providing everything. So I thought, okay, that I don't need to bring any clothing because the wardrobe's provided. Uh, and then I walked in and there wasn't a wardrobe, there was just a box of toys. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we like talking like photos and videos. That was everything. But it was also because this was back in, back in the day when you'd actually get paid to do that kind, like where it was pre-content creation. But I think most people would have actually left <laughs> when they saw the toy box. <laughs> So, basically, you saw it as like an opportunity, like a second job. Terry, what about you, son? My first experience of making, um, I hate to use the word porn, I prefer to use the word adult entertainment, uh, was when I was at uni, actually. <laughs> Tam knows this. Um, I got to the Slade School of Fine Art, which is um, part of UCL, and it was a two-year master's on film. And our uh, final project was to make a movie in 16 <laughs> mil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, so we basically moved each other's students around. And we were given a, a really budget at the time was like 40 pounds, which was a lot of money then. And we all went out with the sound guy, director, and the camera guy. And when it came to my turn, what are you going to shoot, Terry? And I thought, oh, let's, let's do something unusual. And uh, to cut a long story short, I made a, a lesbian film. <laughs> Black and white. It was in black and white. <laughs> very artistic, very erotic. <laughs> different kind of student film too, but all right. Each to their own. So Olga, has the industry changed throughout the years? It's changed so much now. Right. How it was and how it's it now. Before all companies or most of them, they pay you travel expenses. Uh, at least lunch and most of them provide also outfits for performers and now it's like literally horrible <laughs> they don't want to put uh, pay you even a scene or photo set as people try to do content share everywhere like till 2010 it was much better people like had more money i think uh, but also internet were killing slowly DVD market, so people move to into websites and also comes free tube so the content start to be available everywhere for free. Jump, uh, and it's about the DVDs, it's very interesting and sorry to interrupt, but I had um, some requests um, from customers about DVDs and the DVD market uh, and even the CD market has gone through the roof now in terms of sales um, in the similar way that vinyls come back and that's huge and I wanted to know why is why are DVDs selling 
Um, that's what everyone used to buy, but now, of course, it's all streamed or whatever. But the reason why people are buying DVDs, and they're huge in America, is that because of the, the data on websites, customers are very nervous now with data breaches, uh, hacking, etc., etc. So they're going into stores and ordering DVDs, or they're buying them online. So, okay, um, so would you say the industry is more open for a wide range of people now? So I think everyone should have the ability to access the industry, whether that is to be, I mean, it's very unlikely you're going to be financially independent from being in the industry. Like, I think taking, like, let's take that option off the table because it's highly unlikely. But if you're using it to feel liberated or... Um, get some sort of sort of sexual freedom um, and all of those sort of positive things, then entering the industry in that sense is probably a good thing for people to do. You can see people that are thin, fat, mm. Mm. Oh. tall, short, yeah. like physically normal. Like you've got every sort of kind of person um, and it makes it a very accepting sort of environment. Like when we have award ceremonies and things, the people that you see are not all page three and they're not all Vogue. Yeah. They're all different kinds of people. So I think in that respect, the, the industry has been really good for showing that there are different kinds of people. <laughs> but with that happening, it makes it incredibly hard for someone who does want to stay in the industry long term to actually make an income. Because I know at, at the point where everyone was onboarding to those platforms, most of the people that were sort of like myself and Alora, <laughs> we were pretty certain that we wanted to stay, if not forever, that we wanted to make an income from it. Um, and so we would put lots of time and energy and effort into the videos that we made and the pictures that we did. Um, and we'd do things that we knew were niche so that we'd get certain types of fans. And to reflect that, the rate and the price for our sites was a premium. But then it was quite disheartening to see someone without their face in their video, laying in an unmade bed with a toy, which is exactly what, like, guys don't need to see a face, let's face it. Like, they, they just want to see the bits. But you've got, like, our sites that were 12 to 15 pound a month, and then someone essentially either charging $5 or nothing. And... When a guy, like there are obviously, there are certain groups that do want to see the nun outfit, the uniform, the whatever. But there, I think, the greater majority, if they're not particularly interested in a niche, just need to see the legs open. And so they're going to go with the free instead of oh. the charge. So tell, um... Like, you don't need like a big film crew no more, do you? I mean, times have changed, ain't like back in the day, you just do it on your, on your old dog and bone now. You know what I mean? Is that a good thing or a bad um, thing? I feel now, obviously, when I started, it was many, many studios around um, and the internet had literally just started and there wasn't webcamming, only fans didn't exist and so on. Facebook didn't exist. And as time wore on, um, People then joined OnlyFans and very similar sites and people working from home realised that they could make money in a safe environment, their, their own home, and do what they wanted to do on webcam and, and they were making lots of money. As you probably know, it's been well known that people literally are making tens of thousands a month. But that's rare. That is rare. I mean, it's, it's big names who are on there and they're not doing any stripping or anything. But the... Do you guys actually know anyone like, personally who's making bag of money? Probably only about a handful of people that so make a, yeah. a monthly income comparable to what you'd earn or more than what you'd earn in the, the real world. And uh, Olga, like, like, how busy are you? 
I, I do know sometimes you have shoots five days a week, sometimes you have just one, sometimes nothing, sometimes you have two a day. So it's like completely irregular job. Of course, in warm time, like during spring and summer, people shoot more. Uh, in winter, it's like really, really uh, quiet. I think it's the same like with fashion industry. <laughs> I can tell we work like maybe nine months a year. So, uh, Tamsin, Terry, you look like millionaires. You're above like, the, the minimum wage. Like, are you making like decent money now? I make a living out of it. She does I'm okay. very good. <laughs> I make a very good living out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, she works very hard. Well, mm, I worked really hard when I was doing primarily video and stuff like that. And it wasn't necessarily working hard because I was on set. It was also traveling ridiculous distances to do stuff. Um, but you having, were doing mainstream movies at the time, weren't you? You were doing some yeah, mainstream Yeah, I did. Stuff. Yeah, little bits of. Well, yeah. I remember you were late for a That's shoot okay, and she had a costume change. <laughs> yeah. It must be like mad tricky, like switching between like mainstream and basically porn. There's a girl in the industry who still sort of works in the industry, but she actually does um, talent acquisition for Hollywood and mainstream TV. Um, <laughs> because every time they need a, a nude actor or a sex scene or anything like that, she's like, ah. I have a catalogue of people that are more than happy to get their bits out on camera. Um, and so quite often she's, she's like, oh, the, the film with the dragons in it needs someone who wants to gyrate against a, a pillar. <laughs> like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> and honestly, you just sit there in a corner and because it's Hollywood, they've got all these like safeguarding things. So when you're not, have, when the camera isn't rolling, there's a person assigned to you who covers you with a sheet. It's hilarious. Don't they have those intimate coordinators yes. now? And I was like, this is ridiculous. I was like, you can you can totally just go. Like, I don't I don't care. <laughs> so I did Game of Thrones uh, The Great. And some of them were really funny. I did one where I was, I think it was in the last the last season, and I was one of the muses. I was dressed as war. Except I wasn't dressed. <laughs> I was just holding a little ship. <laughs> uh, no, I was wearing a corset, but it had absolutely no chest. It was just, yeah, it was complete, like, <laughs> out, holding a tiny ship, oh. going, woo! Oh, God, I got like, to Like, while that. I talk about war. <laughs> so, Tam's in basically loud and proud, and, and, and Terry, like, I mean, you're around, like, the, the man them, yeah? Do you, like, don't tell no one your business? No, no, I mean, for me anyway, it's very, everyone's different, but for me personally, uh, I've been quite happy to have discussed what I do with people, um, and my face is all over the internet, um, which I'm not unhappy about. Um, there's some things that are on there that I don't like, but unfortunately, once you sign the model release, uh, which we all sign and etc., then, you know, that, that your freedom of choice on that is gone in a way, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're not ashamed of what we do, far from it. We, I think I mentioned to you earlier, um, we are providing people with pleasure in this horrible world at the moment. You know, people can access what we do and, you know, they pay for it, but they get pleasure from it, which I think is a positive thing, to be honest. So people listening from home, right, um, are you just behind the camera? No, I work in them as well. Um, I, we be on his she's face. been kicking me around in a couple of my own films as a gimp. I put a gimp mask on and. Uh, we uh, be on him. Hey? We be on him. Yeah, that's right. They, they peed on me. <laughs> 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 it sells, and these sort of things, you know, the perversions of life, which we all go and keep behind closed doors in bedrooms or bathrooms, is suddenly visible to everyone. People don't like porn because they associate it with an addiction and they, they use that as a means of kind of ignoring other factors because watching porn is no different realist. Like if you can develop an addiction to porn in the same way that you can develop an addiction to 
smoking or weed or, or whatever that's because when you do when you like if we take a cigarette when you smoke a cigarette you get your serotonin and your oxytocin rises and you feel good which then allows you to go out into the real world and not tell people to go and kill themselves like it gives you a positive boost and porn has exactly the same effect and i think if 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 society if society gave people the the experience that they needed in order to be happy and content and get out of life the serotonin and oxytocin that they needed in order to feel comfortable then they wouldn't necessarily run to watch four hours of porn in order to be able to get up in the morning yeah. like porn is there as a, a nice little a little boost and for most people it's fine like you know like what's the last thing I do at night when I get into bed? I pull out my vibrator. I put on some really weird like gay porn. <laughs> it's always gay porn. <laughs> it's never anything else. Sometimes it's the ones with the tentacles. <laughs> oh, I um, love them. Good. I like when the tentacle. I've got a tentacle dildo now. Ooh, by the way. no, I like when the tentacle goes in and then out of their mouth. It doesn't make any sense, Ooh, yeah. but it's weird. Yeah, we look a bit. Like <laughs> She's weird. <laughs> So I need to ask you this, Olga. Yeah, does your work affect your relationships? Mm, I don't know, but I think it should be someone from the industry because uh, the person with a civil chip it would be really difficult to understand and explain what are you doing. <laughs> and how about you, Tamsin? So, like right off the bat, I don't think I would actually date anyone that's in the industry. Oh, so you're not dating me then? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> you, can, you can take me for food. Okay, that'll do. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't date within the industry in the same way that I, if I worked in an office, I wouldn't date someone on the same floor as me. Do, yeah. Like, I, I, what is it? You don't shit where you eat? Yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, I just don't, I, like, I, because... Don't shit where you eat. Yeah, it's my favourite, like yeah. <laughs> when you don't drink where you piss. <laughs> Although, um... <laughs> But it's but true, I she's right. Yeah, I don't think it's... And I, it's no shame on anyone that that does and manages to. I think there it are a lot all of... It all the time, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, people are getting married, yeah. you know. And, but I think there's lots of relationships within the industry yeah. where either they've met and they've gotten married and they now stay in the industry, yeah. or um, they went into the industry together as a couple. That's like the hot wife thing. Um, but personally, I wouldn't, and that is probably because I've dated to, I, yeah, I did when I first came in, I made the, what I would class myself as a mistake of dating people that are in the industry on the basis of feeling like I would never be able to date someone outside of it. Mm -hmm. um, because that does seem to be a thing anyway, that a lot of people, women, it's not, it's not necessarily the men, but a lot of women in the industry feel like if they're honest about what they do, they would never get any of the, the good people on a dating app. And to be fair, you probably are, you're more likely to find people that are judgmental than, than positive, or you will get the people that like hyper positive, that go, oh my God, can we, can I watch you on set? No. I don't know. I'm just curious about one thing, because you mentioned that about that girlfriend experience and, and people yeah. I know, girls I know, uh, when they see customers, and it's obviously like a girlfriend experience, which does play on the emotions. At the end of the day, it what okay, it is a job. Let's like put that as the true. first it's thing. A career. It's a job. And the amount of energy that goes into doing that is what makes it a job. The the emails, the phone calls, the scheduling, and the actual time spent on a date. Have I fallen asleep on a date before? Yes, I have. It, and it was someone that I, I was hopeful by email. They seemed super like visceral and, and um, super uh, engaging. Um, and yeah, two hours into that four hour day, I, I'm fairly sure I fell asleep. But you know what? He gave me a massage. He Aww, just, it was fine. It was okay. He didn't take it personally because I don't think he realized. I used to do sex parties, which we used to film. And I remember one sex party, there was these two amazing good looking guys there and I got chatting to them. And I said, um, just out of curiosity guys, you are fantastic looking, very, very fit. Why are you coming here? When you could get any girl you wanted. 
and they gave me a pretty much clear answer. Uh, because all the girls, of course, at the party would have wanted to play with them and so on. And they said, I'll tell you why, Terry. Uh, because we come to your parties because we love the fun and the music and the girls, but they don't ask us for our phone number. Ah. You see, they pay their entry that. fee. Uh, they, ha they have two hours of, you know, with a mix of girls There's and no other guys. Trail. There's no paper trail. So they paid their money, they go away, and they, uh, they may, I don't know, they may book escorts as well, but again, escorts don't ask, well, have your phone number anyway, but they won't ask you, oh, can I see you tomorrow? And what are you doing this afternoon? And, uh, you know, can we go out for a walk? Or, oh. That's just a little PS to what Tom <laughs> said, really. Uh, that they are people, I mean, it's just one other little thing. My wife, ex wife, who was a dominatrix, she told me the majority of her customers didn't come to get whipped or flogged, they came to have a talk. Yeah. And they were usually managing directors or senior executives who um, bossed everyone else around, let's say, and for once they liked to be bossed around themselves, but they liked to talk to somebody like my ex. But yeah. that's another little story. Yeah. My favourite, my absolute favourite thing is when, um, it's generally, it's generally guys, when guys join the industry and they realise that a uh, professional or even amateur porn shoot is not, like to get an, like a 30 minute clip of footage, it's not just 30 minutes. Yeah, um, in the same way that like a two hour video like cut into chunks isn't two hours like they don't seem to realize that it's stop start stop start yeah, you cut out all the funny bits and then stuff, they yeah. i think they realize quite quickly it's not actually as fun as they might have thought oh, originally no, no, yeah. like we don't like when i've been on a professional set it's not eight hours of of sex it's a lot of sitting around thinking about not sexy things so you can continue going for mm. the duration of that mm. that shoot it's very difficult yeah. for male performers and there's only a limited number in the uk yeah. who do it well they travel around europe to prague barcelona etc the other adult capitals as it were and uh, they do mostly do a good job in fact i worked with someone the other day um a guy called billy whitewood and he's well, fabulous you know wonderful guy uh, he did, can pop on command. He did, he, the, his record for <laughs> shots in one day, I asked him during the shoot, six. Oh God. For a guy who's in his 40s, and that's not bad, is it? But on the shoot I did with him, he did a couple, really good ones. Mm. Uh, but these people are rare. Yeah. All the guys want to come in via my website. I must get at least half a dozen requests a week, ever since it's been up there from amateurs who've seen what we do and think they can do it. They can't do it, or rarely. I'd say probably, I don't know, one in ten, maybe, or a lot more than that. But, but you know, guys can't pretend. It's simple as that. I've had to pretend. Not, not sorry, not me coming. As in, I've had to do that. Yeah, where I had yeah. a shoot with, a, yeah. and we'd planned it well in advance. <coughs> which I know doesn't like doesn't really matter one way or the other. But we'd we'd plan the shoot. T I turned up for the shoot. The the guy couldn't. Get it up. Couldn't get it up, let alone anything else. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, on my, I didn't expect on my bingo card for 2023 <laughs> to have <laughs> tipping my legs up in the air and <coughs> squeezing as much of a bottle of um, white Gavis coloured <laughs> lube into myself so that I could pretend. Yeah. I was like, this is ridiculous. I've, fake, I've had to fake several shots in my time as well. I was like, hang like, a minute. Whoa. But you, like, can't, you can't fake not having an no, but I was like, election. Why does the, why does the fucking, <laughs> the pussy having performer always yeah. draw the short straw? Like when <laughs> the, when the guy, the when the guy either, when he <laughs> has to do multiple cum shots, the girl has to put the gaviscon in her mouth <laughs> and then swallow it. And you're like, well, at least I won't get heartburn. <laughs> or he can't cum <laughs> you. <laughs> And so you have to fill yourself up with yeah, yeah, Isn't there somewhere he can hide it? Mm. So he can mm. pretend. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh dear me. And of course, um, Viagra's helped a lot. And um, you know, a lot of uh, new guys will take Viagra or similar pills. And this can help. This will give them a hard on. But it, but it, it can detract from a shot. So, um, you know, they might even pop a couple of those. 
And uh, yeah, you know, they can stay hard and etc. But you know, it's all about the money shot. I'm I'm I met a guy who took too many Viagra really? on a shoot. Oh God, what happened? And he had to go to hospital. Oh yeah. Yeah, because he was start, he was getting what's it called? Um, like oh, a stress that's migraine. That's what happens. Because he it? was like, yeah, I got the right. blood. I got, I got, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, think. Exactly. And so he literally had someone on set put him in their car <laughs> and take him to the hospital. And I was like, that must have been like one of the most embarrassing conversations you've ever had with a triage wow. nurse. And he said, no, she was actually very understanding and was actually She's pleased serious. that there wasn't something that I was reporting in my arm. Because <laughs> she normally was like, oh, I'll try to get something out what did you, what did you put in your bum? And she's like, oh, it's not your bum. Okay, great. <laughs> so Olga, I need to ask you this. Do you feel like the public look at the industry, is it a lot more liberal now? I think it's getting worse society attitude, definitely. It's like more of this uh, feminist, uh, liberal way, uh, oppressed women and all this bullshit coming uh, before people were not thinking about it, but now everyone is raped and everyone is abused. It's, all, it's quite rightly said, the industry's dramatically changed now. Um, more so at the moment because of all only fans that everyone's a creator now um, if you've got a phone and a webcam or a phone and a cam you know your phone that's all you need sorry you just need a phone so you're, you're a creator I would say there are to be fair the majority mm, a lot of the people that I've met the girls in the industry that I've met have had some sort of experience in their teens, at the minimum, um, that may have had a negative effect and may have, I don't know, caused them to make a choice to go into the industry. Mm. I think, on the other hand, there are lots of women who have had a bad experience at some point and are wanting to reclaim authority and control over their own body because Although it's not necessarily the case, if something bad happens and you do something good, you might eventually be able to feel like you've taken ownership of it. Um, so there are, but actually I think more than anything else, in the industry at the moment, it's very apparent that the way society is has let a lot of us down. There are a lot of people in the industry who are somewhat challenged by being in a corporate environment or a structured nine to five or things like that because of neurodivergence. Mm. So a lot of the people that I've met in the industry have um, autism or ADHD or mental health conditions like that make own. being in an environment where you have to get up at the same time every day to go to work, sit in an office, to yeah. do the grind and then go home. It's just not conducive with the way that their brains work. So what you're saying is, is a lot more people could be more in, in, inclusive in the adult entertainment industry. Yeah, so I know there's one girl in particular uh, and she she has a chronic, chronic pain, I think. Um, so she said sometimes she'll wake up in the morning and she just doesn't, she physically can't mm. do it. She can't get up. But she said, but because of the job that she does, she can afford to go back to bed or rest or whatever for a few more hours, get up and just work from 11 till nine instead. She's like, because she's got the flexibility to do that. Whereas she was like, if I had a real, a real world job, if I was to call in three or four times a week and go, I'm really sorry, I need to come in two hours late, she would never have a job. Because it's just not, and obviously a chronic health condition is an entirely different thing, but I think when people don't, when there's still a limited acknowledgement of the way that neurodivergence affects people, yeah, very true. saying, I'm really sorry, I'm having a bit of a bad day, can I work from home? Most offices go, either come in or, or don't bother. So, like, do you still enjoy the art of lovemaking, or is it just like, is it just like work for you now? I think, 
<laughs> Weirdly, by being in the industry, I've realised I'm probably more asexual than anything else. Mm. <laughs> by coming into the industry, I actually realised I probably prefer women to men as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm sort of, yeah, I don't know. I, I would much rather sit on the couch, watch a film, and like, and, and, <laughs> and cuddle on the couch. We don't, yeah. cuddle in, we don't cuddle in bed, but we no. cuddle on the couch. Um, I'm much more comfortable and like happy doing that than I am actually having sex. But I also think that when I was in relationships before I came into the industry, I had sex because of the performative element as opposed to actually being particularly interested in it. Mm, mm. Well, I mean, yeah. I've been married twice. My first wife didn't know about this and my second wife was in the industry when I, uh, I met her. She's, she's Brazilian, still stay in touch. We had an amicable party and she assisted me a lot of times uh, on my shoots. So now we split up and I'm a single guy who is claiming a pension, by the way. Thank you very much for all that. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. Look, you, you look good for your age, you know what I mean? I don't, man. I've got my 75th party coming up, you know? I know, I know. It's because I mix with young people and, and you've got to have a positive attitude. We, constantly, we, we, we talk about this positivity. And yeah, of course, we all have tough things happening to us. We've all got health issues. But because we've got a, a really good bunch of people in this business who are basically bonkers. <laughs> We're all Terry crazy. got injured a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah, that's true. And last year, actually, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it was. It was last year. And um, you, you never failed to have people essentially living at your bedside. Like, the, the, the really industry looks like after the industry's fine. own. Yeah. Like, if you're an asshole, yeah. or, you know, we just don't... <laughs> As in life, if you're an asshole, people would rather not be near you. Yeah. But if, if you're loved and cared for in the industry, you will have people come to your bedside. Absolutely. When I, I, I had to go and have surgery oh, a couple right. years ago, yeah. and I, at no point did I have a dead flower. Like they were all oh. consistently fresh flowers and chocolates and I got fat. But that's fine. And actually, <laughs> having worked in normal jobs, you like I remember the last job I worked in and when I left I went back maybe like a week later because I needed to, to collect something and the people there didn't realize I'd left oh what because the management had not told anyone and they were like oh we just thought you were on holiday no no we always say we're all fighting in the same corner we've got us in one corner everyone from the sex <laughs> industry let's say that covers all the different denominations and then you've got people who are opposed to the sex mm. industry opposite that could include parts of the government the religions right-wingers or you know I'm don't I'm not naming names but it is us against them mm. and most of the public I believe I might be wrong are on the side of people who do this work and when we are attacked by somebody about porn we do stick together we will support that person i have a heartwarming thing so the we're like the the industry could be a bit weird about unions because oh, you know yeah. um but there is a union that the sex workers are part of um a gen, like for some reason it seems to be to be escorts but technically everyone who's in the industry can join it um, to get all the sort of like benefits that you get from being in a union, um, but we had a, a like a we, have a we had an annual we conference, have a <laughs> um, and oh, me yeah. and two other girls in the industry were at this this meeting, and we are a branch of a union that supports like factory workers, oh, well, bakers. Yeah. Um, and all of, yeah. Yeah, I could believe um, that. And we were in this room with um, <laughs> like middle aged men that have always worked on a factory production line, um, people that make sausage rolls for a living uh, and bread. Um, and in this room, there were people that were like from, yeah, everywhere from the Soviet Union to Greece to all corners of the UK. Um, and there was a woman that was, because sometimes you walk into a room and you get very uncomfortable about saying that you're a sex worker because you don't, you, you don't want to create any unease 
not necessarily because you're, you're concerned about it, but you just don't want it coming back onto you. But there was a woman in the room and the three of us were a bit worried because this, this lady was wearing a full um, hijab. And, and so instantly we were like, okay, let's just be a little bit like gentle. She was fucking brilliant. We were talking about something and she went, how dare people tell you how you're allowed to make your money? I'm, like, she said, I'm pleased you're part of our union because you deserve to have the right to make money however you want. She was like, I'd, I wouldn't do it. But she's like, that doesn't mean I'm going to stop you doing it. And she was like, you know what? When you, have, when you go on your strike and you go to your general meeting, she's like, let me know. I'll be there. That's exciting. Well, I was like, yes. Yeah. You know what? Um, it sounds like you guys really enjoy the industries you're, you're, you're in. And, and, and by looking at you, you ain't going to give it up no time soon. It'll never stop. I mean, porn's... What did they say? That uh, the first um, thing that man ever did was feed and water himself. And the second thing he did was, I mean, you see the cave drawings. <laughs> Porn also is at the forefront of all new technologies. AI, for example, this is a big problem we've got at the moment uh, in the industry. It, it is really unbelievable. Uh, AI is going to be very good for our industry and very bad for it. A uh, generated like uh, many images you can do, like fake porn in uh, creating internet. And I don't know if in five years any, anyone will need performers, the real one. If, for example, you can just draw in internet somebody. You really think so? Maybe, maybe, because we go in this way. So, Olga, what do you think about your future? Mm, I start not to think in it. I'm trying not to do any plans because you never know what will be tomorrow. And so, but I think I will do some kind of job related to adult industry because actually I don't know what kind of job I can do. It should be something related to this business. Sex is the procreation of the world. And, uh, and it's also just a good time. And it's having a <laughs> good time as well. Sorry, for that word there, but uh, delete. But yeah, I mean, what is, what's the problem? Have it, pleasure, fun, sex, parties, and good quality porn, you know. Thank you guys, uh, I really appreciate the conversation. Olga, Tamsin, Terry, um, I, I wish you all the success in the future. You know what I mean? Um, let, let's, let's do a part two. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>